Hi, I'm Rob Cosman. Welcome to my shop. I want to show you the tools that are required if you plan on taking my dovetail workshop. I thought instead of just writing a list, I'd do a YouTube so I can actually explain to you why I, I choose particular tools over others. Start on this end. Mallet. You just want something comfortable. I'm going to be using it for in a 10-hour class, so I don't want it too heavy. I actually prefer the round mallet as opposed to the hammer type. The reason is it doesn't have to be directional, meaning if you have a hammer type, and you don't hit it straight on, it's going to glance off. Whereas this, I just find works a whole lot better. Glue, I prefer Tight Bond 3. It has a little more open time. Uh, go through the easy ones first. Uh, a dovetail marking gauge. Now the nice thing about this one is it marks the square line across the face as well as the angle up, the, pardon me, the square line across the end as well as the angled mark up the face. So you get two markings with one setting. And this one allows for a softwood setting and a hardwood setting. One offers a little more splay. Marking gauge. I much prefer the round wheel style marking gauge. I find it's uh, easier to sharpen. Much easier to actually operate. And the nice thing about it is if you're, if you're having to take your line just a little bit further, you can simply roll it to get to that point. Whereas the traditional style, once you set the beam down, you lost the pin and it was completely out of sight. But this one, you get to see it through the entire process. So this is the, pro this is the uh, style of gauge that I prefer. I actually make these. Second thing is going to be a uh, pair of dividers. This is for the layout. Six inch or three inch, doesn't matter, but you want ones that will actually hold their fixed position as opposed to just relying on friction. So this screw, they're spring-loaded, and the screw will change the setting and stays fixed. Uh, I use this pallet knife for gluing. I find it's a lot easier and neater than a brush. You can get into tight spots. You can buy them in any artist supply store. They're very inexpensive. I prefer a red pen. The reason is a red pen is much easier to see on dark wood like walnut or mahogany. And I prefer a ball point. You don't want to use a roller ball. Roller balls will bleed down into the end grain, and you may have a problem getting rid of the ink but a ballpoint much better and if you can find a fine point that's even better still small combination square this is great it's uh, it's uh, made by Sterrett has a bubble level in it so that when you're setting your board in place and I always do this you can make sure that it's actually standing plumb using the bubble level and you'll want to square things up after you've assembled the joint Small steel hammer, this is a 12 ounce, it's for tapping the joint together. I prefer that over a rubber mallet because you can actually read or feel what's going on. You can tell if one pin's too tight or if one is loose, so small hammer. Chisels, um, two are, are good enough. A quarter inch and a half inch will pretty much take care of everything that you're going to need. My preference are socket style because of the, the ease of preparing the backs. You want good steel, obviously, you want them to hold an edge as long as possible. You're going to want a plane. I prefer the five and a half. You use it for two purposes. I actually use it on its side to prop up the two pieces of wood when I'm, after I've cut my tailboard, I put the pin board in the vise, holding it flush with the top of the plane, set the plane back, and then I would put the tailboard on top like this. And the reason is that when I apply downward pressure to hold it in place while marking, the, uh, the fact that it's only touching here and here divides the amount of pressure I apply by a very small surface area. So it's much easier to control than if you're trying to do it flush with the bench, you'll find it'll wiggle. So bench plane. Now the last three. The dovetail marking knife. My new type of, uh, of laying, uh, cutting dovetails uses the kerf in the tailboard to actually mark the kerf into the pin boards. And this blade has the exact same thickness of steel and set on the teeth as my dovetail saw. So if you are anywhere around 24 to 26 thousandths saw kerf, then this will work. In other words, you can actually use the saw to do the same job. This is a skew block plane. This is one made by Lee Nelson. I prefer it. And the reason I use it is on the tailboard, I will use that to cut a shallow rabbit on the underside. So you would adjust your fence so that the point of the blade is actually registering right on that gauge line. Lock it in position and then you would use that to cut yourself a small shallow rabbit so that when you take your tailboard and set it on top of your pin board that little rabbit on the underside will be used to 
lo lock the two pieces in place as that little rabbit comes up against the inside edge of the pin board. The two are fixed in position and it's just extremely helpful. Last thing is the saw. Well, you want the, a good dovetail saw. I prefer a pistol grip for the simple reason that you pick it up the same way every time. You will eventually be able to learn to make plumb cuts just by feel alone. If you're using a round handle dovetail saw, you don't benefit from that because it's going to register in your hand differently every time you pick it up. You're always having to watch the line. This will allow you out of habit and gravity to be able to make plumb cuts simply by feel. Now, the, the other thing, the other characteristic that you want in your dovetail saw is you want the saw to make perfectly straight cuts literally on its own. What I mean by that is the saw, because of the set, should give you a perfectly straight cut. And here's how you check it. Cut into a piece of hardwood, turn the board over, and then cut that piece off. Now, if you're going to join saw cut to saw cut, you have to have a surface on the two pieces such that if you put them together, you will get an acceptable glue joint. And if you turn it around so that you're not matching grooves, you're still getting that very acceptable glue joint. So when the side of your pin comes up against the side of your tail, you have two flat surfaces meeting and you get a great glue joint which results in a great joint, period. So that's what you want to look for in your dovetail saw and you want to make sure that you have that. Other words, you're fighting an uphill battle. Those are the tools that you're going to need for the dovetail workshop. If you were to eliminate any of them, boy, it'd be pretty tough. I suppose you could borrow somebody's glue. But other than that, you're going to uh, you're going to need all of these. You're going to use them, and you want to use your own because this is something that you're going to become very accustomed to. Actually, you know what? I forgot one, and that's the fret saw. And let me just explain that real quick. As opposed to a coping saw, the advantage of a fret saw, this is a small three-inch frame, is that the blades available are thinner than the kerf left by the dovetail saw. That means that after you've made your cut, I'm going to do another one just so that you can understand this. In fact, I'll make two cuts side by side. Now, as I just mentioned, you want to protect that nice, smooth, flat wall. So you don't want to have a, a saw, a fret saw that has a blade wider than that kerf and you're scoring it all the way down. This one will drop right down there without wrecking that side, and then I can start to turn while I'm cutting, and I can make that cut rather quickly. I use 12 and a half teeth per inch, skip tooth style blades. You cut on the pull stroke, and then what I do after I've installed the blade is I take a pair of pliers and I give it a little twist right here and right here. So that when I'm making a horizontal cut, instead of being restricted by the three inch depth of throat, the frame is actually up against, up above the joint, and I'm not restricted in any way. Remember, it cuts on the pull stroke. Okay, those are the tools you need for the dovetail workshop. Look forward to seeing you.